Have you ever wanted to send a friend a feeling? What, like a text or something? Or like a YouTube clip? No, like a GIF. <laughs> What's a GIF? A GIF is kind of a happy medium between a text message and a video message. There's no sound though, so it's more like a picture than a video. Oh, well, I have an Instagram that I use for taking my nature photos, but sometimes I want to share scenes with people and it doesn't really work out very well. It's just a viewpoint. I want to make people feel like they're there. Well, you can use GIFs to make people feel that. And you can take GIFs from photos. GIFs are the perfect way to capture a feeling. In the late 80s, before the modern GIF, Steve Wilhite created the first GIF. You said modern GIF. What's changed since the late 80s? A lot of things. The picture quality and software have improved. There are also better image editing platforms, like Photoshop, now in the internet age. You sound really cool. Wait, I think I've seen a few of these on Facebook, actually. My friends send these sometimes in conversations, but I don't really know if they were links to images or videos or what they were. Yeah, those are called reaction GIFs. People use them as a quick way to convey feelings without having to actually type out their feelings. People often use them on social media sites. Another type of GIF you may have seen is an endless looping GIF. It's a GIF that has no clear beginning or end, so it looks like it goes on forever. So there's only those two types of GIFs? That's simple enough. Actually, there's lots of types of GIFs. Those two are the most common types people come into. There are lots of co cool and innovative GIFs out there, too, like 3D GIFs and cinematographs. Oh, I like 3D. Every new movie, 3D showings. Do I need the 3D glasses to make them appear so, though? No. <laughs> 3D GIFs work by creating optical illusions to trick your eye into thinking that the image is 3D when it is actually 2D. There are several different ways to make 3D GIFs, actually either using white bars to create the illusion or using static photographs. Oh, neat. So I can use my nature photos to make a 3D GIF? Yeah, you can. A lot of artists actually use videos of nature instead of photos, though, and convert those into cinemagraphs to capture a scene. Scene, cinema, those are film terms. Could this be useful for movies, too? What exactly is a cinemagraph? You certainly can. A cinemagraph is a GIF in which very few portions of the GIF are animated. People often use them to closely examine moments in films and create or create interesting art. Oh, so I don't have to keep replaying a video or worrying about the volume and I can eliminate distractions from what I'm, whatever I'm trying to highlight? Like, did you see those birds fly through in the background of that scene? Exactly. Or if you're trying to follow a single character through a scene in a movie. That sounds really useful, actually. My friends usually send me silly ones and jokes and reaction GIFs, apparently, but that sounds like something even a professor might use in the classroom. GIFs are actually very useful for academics as well. Most commonly in film classes, but also other classes might use reaction GIFs or cinematographs to emphasize talking points. I even had to make a few for assignments. Uh, I, I mean, I expected essays and projects, but GIFs? That sounds a little different. That must have been hard. GIFs are actually very easy to make once you learn the steps. Well, GIFs seem to have made quite an impact on our culture, especially the internet culture. From the late 80s until now, GIFs can come pretty far and are actually a lot more diverse. And it's nice being able to make them from either images or videos, and some people prefer one over the other. So you know how to make them. Could you show me how to make one? Please, please, please? Yeah.